Hi guys, welcome to the dying studio of Fiber for the People Yarn. My name is Taylor and this is Tips from the Dying Studio. I'm here with you guys today to share my strategy for straightening out gnarly, curly, and tangled skeins of yarn. There is some equipment that you need for this if you're using my technique and that is a steamer. I have a closed steamer behind me here that I'm going to be using and I have a skein of yarn that is a little bit on the tangly side and I have a few examples to share with you guys as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So I have right here a skein of yarn that is a little bit on the curly side. So what happens and the reason why you get this is because you'll pull a skein of yarn out of your soak and you'll hang it in such a way that it just kind of um, dries and coils in on itself. And it's really important when you pull your skeins of yarn right out of the soak and before you hang it on your drying rack that you kind of straighten it out a little bit with your fingers, uh, pull the fibers taut so that way that pulls out any of the potential coils and then lay them over in as flat a manner as you possibly can. However, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you're running short on time and you just need to pull them out of the soak and hang them someplace and move on because you just need to get other things done. And that happens. And that doesn't make the yarn any less beautiful and lovely. And it definitely doesn't do anything to the feel of the yarn. It just makes for a really, not even a really messy, but a somewhat messy skein. Okay, so a closer look at this skein, you can kind of see here that the different strands of the yarn are beginning to curl right here. And that is, and this is actually not nearly as bad as some skeins that I've had before, um, but that can definitely pose a little bit of a problem when you're trying to make a really nice skein. Now, when you go to skein this up, depending on your technique for skeining your yarn, you're going to be pulling your yarn tightly to twist it, and that's gonna pull out some of that curl. But again, depending on the way that you're doing this, some of that curl is not gonna get pulled out and it's gonna remain kinky in the skein and you kinda wanna avoid that. At least I would like to avoid that in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my steamer to straighten that out. But first I wanna show you a little bit of an example of what I'm talking about when it comes to a more uh, messy or rustic looking skein and one that's been steam straightened. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, so here we have three skeins and I'm, I purposely have three because there's three different variations of how the skein has been twisted here. So we're gonna start with this one first. So this is a skein that the yarn has been taken straight from the drying rack where it was hanging, kind of like this one, and wrapped up willy-nilly without having been straightened first, without having been combed out with my fingers or with a steamer. This is just twisted just the way it is right off the hanger. So you can see here that we definitely have somewhat of a messy skein. Now granted, I could easily stick these little ones hanging out. I could tuck them in to the little crevices created by the twist. I can definitely do that and I always do that. I like to hide away those little loose ties of the skein but you're still left with this, and I'm gonna call this uh, rustic. I'm not gonna say messy, because in all honesty, I'm sure there's some uh, yarn purveyors out there who like to present their yarn in this fashion because it has that artisanal look to it. It's a little bit more rustic, and that's fine. It can be beautiful um, sometimes. It's just not my favorite thing to do. But this is one that's pulled right off the drying rack and twisted. I twisted this one eight times, and I twisted the other two eight times as well. So everything has been twisted identically, and it's all the same colorway, all the same yarn base. So that is kind of one pulled directly off the drying rack and twisted. Then we have one over here that was pulled off the drying rack, combed out with my fingers um, a little bit and then twisted. So it's a little bit nicer, a little bit neater. You can compare them side by side. So definitely a nicer presentation here or a less rustic presentation. And then you have this one here, which I steamed I, co I pulled it off the drying rack, I combed it out with my fingers, and then I steamed it, and then combed it out again with my fingers to straighten out any of the remaining kinky portions of the yarn, and I twisted it eight times, just like I did with the others. Now, on the back of this yarn, you can see the little ties sticking out. You can just kind of tuck those in. Those are the long strands of yarn that tie the skeins so that they don't get tangled. Um, I always keep those. I never retie the skein because it makes it easier to cake it up when you when you need to. So that is a nice steamed skein of yarn. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right to it. Let me show you how I steam my skeins of yarn to keep them nice and straight. Okay, so this is it. This is my clothing steamer right here. It's just a basic run-of-the-mill, inexpensive clothing steamer that I picked up on Amazon. It's nothing special. I didn't spend a lot of money on this. Don't like invest in a really nice clothing steamer just for this purpose. It was inexpensive. I knew it would be something that would help in this case. I picked it up to have in my dyeing studio. 
just to have on hand just in case. And I'm happy that I did, but I didn't spend a lot. Really important to emphasize that. So I'm pretty much just going to steam out the skein, much like you would steam out a blouse or a pair of pants or what have you. The only difference is that I don't wanna have the steam head in contact with the yarn for too long. Just like, well, just like you wouldn't have it with a shirt or something of cotton, because it could burn. And in this case, it could scorch the yarn, and I really don't want that. This is super wash yarn. It's not, uh, it doesn't have a propensity to felt like non-super wash yarn would, so I'm not too worried about that. But I just want to be extra careful because I don't want to scorch any of the yarn. So you do have to kind of be gentle and cautious and take your time when you do this. Okay, so I just draped my yarn over the shoulders of the, steamer and I'm just going to straighten it out, open up the different strands, give it a little bit of a shake. That's about right. So we're ready to go. We can just go ahead and start steaming. Be very careful. Do not run your hand down the back of the yarn while you're steaming it or you're in for a really, really awful surprise. It's really dangerous to do that. You will definitely burn yourself. And sometimes these steamers come with little mitts like this that you can put on your hand so that you can rub it down the back of the fabric don't buy into that it doesn't work i tried that when i first got this and learned my lesson the hard way the seam goes right through the fabric of the mitt so you need to be really really careful and in this case you really don't have to worry about that as much what we're trying to do right now is just blast it with some nice wet heat steam and that will help to kind of release the curl and the coil in the fiber itself almost as if you're re-wetting the yarn but it's only just a subtle moisture that it's going to dry quickly and you can get right to skeining it okay my steamer head is hot and ready to go there's steam blasting out of it i'm going to go ahead and get started what i like to do is i like to take my hand at the bottom of the skein and kind of pull down a little bit to pull it taut so it straightens out the fibers so as i steam it it kind of sets them in place I'll work one side at a time and then move on to the other side. And I just take my time. This isn't a fast process, so you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you're doing this with every skein of yarn that you dye. This is just a last minute thing to do when you have a few skeins that just need to be straightened out. Okay, so I've done that side of the yarn. I'm now going to remove my skein. I'm actually not going to take it off completely. I'm just going to turn it on the neck of the steamer until I get to another spot that needs to be steamed out flatten out the skein a little bit over the shoulders here we go we have another little kinky section here and get to steaming okay so i have finished my yarn and you guys, like the sweat thing is out of control. I really hope you didn't come here today for the sleek sophistication of Taylor Earl because you're not gonna get it. It is muggy and sweaty and disgusting, but we have yarn, so we're okay. Here is the skein that I just steamed and I'm gonna look at it in the camera here. And you can see that the strands, and I'm pulling it a little bit tight, so full disclosure, but if I loosen up my, my tautness here, you can still see the strands are nice and separated like fresh pasta, I guess you could say. That's actually a really good way to look at it. You want to kind of imagine the strands being fresh pasta hanging here without any little gnarls or tangles. So I'll kind of go through and you can kind of see that we have that happening here. Now, like I said, this does take a little bit of time. So again, you really don't want to get into a situation where if you're dying, even if you're a small batch dyer and you're dying, you know, 80 skeins of yarn for an update, you really don't want to get into the situation where you're doing that with every skein of yarn because that obviously you can see that that takes some time. So this skein really wasn't that bad. You know, and sometimes I have skeins that are a lot worse than this, almost borderline um, with little, you know, little tangles that I have to get out. I just really don't want to send anything that has a potential for tangling when it's being caked to my customers. It's really important that they can take it from the skein, put it onto their Swift, wind it into a cake with no problems because I know how frustrating it is to have a skein that is tangled, um, gnarly, and really hard to wind into a cake. So more, even more so than aesthetic reasons, it's that. I really wanna make sure the customer is happy when they receive the yarn and that they aren't being, you know, kind of bogged down in the process of getting started with their project by something that's gonna give them problems on their ball winder. So that's really important. But again, like I said, this one was, wasn't really that bad and it probably would have been fine if I had just combed out with my fingers, 
twisted it into a tight uh, tight skein to pull some of those little loopy areas out it would have been fine but just in case you do have some that are pretty gnarly a steamer is a really excellent uh, resource to kind of help with that now on the note of skeining yarn like I mentioned these skeins of yarn here are twisted eight times that's usually my go-to number of times to twist a skein of yarn for most of my yarn bases some one less some one more uh, depending on how round the yarn is how plump it is you don't want to skein yarn too tight because you don't want to overstretch the yarn because you want it to have some of that elasticity remaining in the yarn. When yarn becomes super washed, it's gonna lose a little bit of that elasticity. You don't wanna you know, reduce that elasticity any more than you have to. So you don't wanna skein it too tight. But when you skein your yarn, it is gonna pull it a little bit more taut, which will alleviate any of those kinks in the yarn. So that's something to keep in mind too. But like I said, just in case, a steamer is a really great way to go. You guys, I'm gonna leave you with that. Hopefully that is a tip that maybe you can use. I have to get inside and cool down because it is so muggy and hot out here. Again, apologize for the sweat, but what can I do? It's probably 105 and 45% humidity, so that's, that's what you get. All right guys, until the next episode of Tips from the Dying Studio, bye.